Hi everyone, uh, Texan Test 2 here, looking at chapter um, 16, 16.1. Uh, I want to start off looking at question 2 here. Uh, this exercise is about something called similar triangles, um, which are triangles that have the same three angles contained in them. Uh, and actually it's sufficient to just have two angles, because if that was 90, and let's suppose that was 60, that was 90 and that's 60, well, the third angle in both cases will be 30. You can always work out the third angle if you know two of them. So two angles in common, or all three angles in common, you have something called similar triangles. Um, and one of the things that we know about similar triangles is the corresponding sides are in the same ratio. So what does that mean? Uh, or sorry, corresponding sides are in proportion. Here's question two drawn out here. And um, it means that, well, if I know that this angle is the same, and this angle is the same as this, and those are both 90, so I know I have similar triangles, but then it's very easy for me to say, well, this small triangle and this big triangle have uh, sides in proportion. Look here, if I multiply six by 12, or sorry, six by two, I get 12, but then it's the same for all of them, okay? This side here multiplied by two will give me eight, okay? So I can come along and say, well, that has to be a four, and this side here multiplied by two, this hypotenuse corresponds to this hypotenuse, that's going to be 14.4, okay? So that two there is called a scale factor. And the scale factor uh, obviously is one of the things you want to work out in all of these questions. What's the scale factor? What am I multiplying by? Um, just to point out as well though, this side eight corresponds to this side four. If I do eight divided by four, I get two. This side 12 divided by this side six, 12 divided by six, also gives me two, my scale factor. And here at the hypotenuse 14.4 corresponds with this side here, 7.2, and I get two. You always get the scale factor. So the ratio of corresponding sides is a fixed constant. In this case, it's two all the time. So if I said 12 over six is the same as eight over four, and notice that on the top of the fraction, I'm working from the big triangle, on the bottom is the side in the small triangle. It's the same as 14.4 over 7.2. Okay, or you could invert that. You could say 6 over 12 is the same as 4 over 8. It's the same as 7.2 over 14.4. That'd be true as well if I said 6 over 12 is the same as 4 over 8. Same as 7.2 <clears throat> over 14.4. So that's what I mean when I say corresponding sides are in proportion. You see there you always get 2. Here you always get 1 half. Um, and that allows us to do a lot of calculations. Question five here, similar kind of question. You've got one angle here that, oh, that's the same as this angle here. Okay, there's question five. You can see they've got a common angle down the bottom and a common 90 degree angle. Um, so that makes our life uh, easy. We've got similar triangles. They're gonna ask us to find X and Y, okay? So copy the complete the statement. Each side of the bigger triangle is how many times the length of the corresponding side of the smaller triangle? Well, five multiplied by what? Give seven and a half. Uh, you can go to your calculator and do seven and a half divided by five equals two. Sorry, one point five. Excuse me. Um, or you might have spotted that straight away. So you're multiplying here by one point five. That's your um, that is your uh, common ratio that you're multiplying by. Okay, or your scale factor. Excuse me. So four multiplied by one point five will give me x. Okay, so I can say, well then x has to be uh, one and a half times four is six, and three multiplied by 1.5 gives me y, so three multiplied by one and a half is 4.5. So those are my two other sides. Um, question 13 asks you, uh, with this triangle here, in a given figure, uh, BC is parallel to DE, Draw out the two triangles separately and mark in the lengths of the known sides in each triangle. Explain why they're similar and then find DE. Okay, so I've already drawn them out separately here. Here's A, B, C over here. And I'm just gonna mark that angle there with a line and that angle there with a double line. So if I come over here, there's my line, there's my double line, okay? That side is four, that side is eight. Um, and that's up there, I'm gonna use a circle. Now that's the same angle in this big triangle here, where I've drawn in the line in the middle by accident, but that's the same angle up there, 
okay? Uh, the distance down the side from A to D in the big triangle, 4 plus 3 is 7. Um, and then if you come back over here, because these are parallel lines, this angle and this angle are corresponding angles, so they have to be the same. Also, this angle and this angle are also corresponding, so they have to be the same. So now I can look at my triangle ADE and ABC. I have similar triangles in both cases. So now I can come along. They've asked me to find the length DE. I'm going to call it X. And I'm going to say, well, what do I know about similar triangles? I know that X divided by 8 will give the same answer as 7 divided by its corresponding side is 4. Okay, so x in the big triangle divided by its corresponding side in the small triangle would be the same as 7 from the big triangle divided by its cor corresponding side here. Okay, so um, how do I get, how do I finish that off? Uh, I say x equals 7 multiplied by 8 over 4, and depending on how you do that, I'm going to cancel 4s out of that and say it's 14. Uh, now, just another thing you could have done here is you could have said, well, I've got a 1 is to 2 ratio here. So because these are similar, that has to be a 1 is to 2 ratio as well. That would have been fine as well. Um, so my scale factor in all of this uh, is 7 over 4, which is, you know, I suppose a bit uh, awkward to work with. So that's why this approach can be quite useful in a lot of circumstances. Uh, that's question 13. Question 16 I want to look at next. Uh, in these given triangles, the arrows indicate that the lines are parallel. Mark in the equal angles and hence use similar triangles to find the values of x and y. Okay, well, uh, I've drawn out this base triangle here. Again, I'm going to mark that with a line. And this is the top triangle, but I've rotated it around. Okay, and what I want to show you is that this angle here that I've marked... If these are parallel lines, which we were told in the question they were parallel lines, then this angle is alternate with this angle, okay? If you remember alternate angles. Uh, same thing over here. This angle here is alternate with this angle here. So they're the same size. Uh, and finally, because these are vertically opposite, this angle and this angle are the same. So come over here, mark them in. Okay, uh, but in this triangle that I spun around, when I spin it around, that's going to move over to uh, this side here. This is going to move over to this side here. And from this side, 18 uh, is corresponding with this side here, 18. <clears throat> this side, 9, is corresponding with this side here, 9. So what is my... Um, Scale factor, well, uh, to get from here, 12, to here, 18, you multiply by 1.5. How did I work that out? Uh, well, I might have said uh, 18 divided by 12 equals 1.5. Okay, um, that allows me to say 18 multiplied by 1.5 will give y, and 18 times 1.5 is 27. And 9 multiplied by 1.5 gives x. 9 multiplied by 1.5 is 13 and a half. Okay, now just to show you another way you could have gotten there, uh, a little bit more formally would have been with this. You would have said uh, 18 over 12 needs to be the same as the corresponding side y over its corresponding side of 18. Okay? Um, and then tidying that up, so you're multiplying, sorry, you're dividing by 18 on the right, so that becomes multiply by 18 on the left. Over 12, you've got uh, equals y. Uh, you've got a common factor of 6 there. And divide 2 in there, you get 9 multiplied by 3 is 27. And up here, uh, hopefully you can lay your work out a little bit tidier. Uh, to find x, well, x divided by its corresponding side of 9 will be the same as from the bigger triangle 18 divided by I know I drew them the same size but this is obviously smaller with 12 divided by 12 and same thing x equals 18 multiplied by 9 divided by 12 I've got a common factor there of 6 uh, and 3 multiplied by 9 is 27 so 
that becomes 27 over 2, which is 13 and a half. Okay, um, before I look at 20, actually, I also want to look at question 11 just quickly, uh, just because this idea of similarity isn't just triangles. So which of these shape families are always similar? All squares are similar because all four angles are always 90 degrees. All rectangles are similar because all four angles are always 90 degrees. Parallelograms, not similar. You can have unsimilar parallelograms. Um, let me draw you a quick example here. That versus something like very long, like that. Those would not be similar. Okay, corresponding sides would not be in proportion. Um, all circles are similar, yes. All equilateral triangles are similar. They all have 360 degree angles. All isosceles triangles are not necessarily similar because um, if you have something like that versus something like that, they're both isosceles, but the sides will not necessarily be in proportion. Okay, so I'll finish up with question 20, uh, which says a surveyor wants to calculate the distance across a lake. Uh, the lake is surrounded by woods and the path has been constructed to provide access to the lake from the road AC, uh, as shown in the diagram. Okay, the lengths of the paths are as follows. They're given there as 120, 80 and 200. Explain how you could use these measurements to find that distance ED and then calculate, it, calculate the distance across the lake. Uh, I'm going to call that distance EDX and I'm going to say, well, what do we have here? We've got that is common in both my big triangle and my small triangle both contain that angle because these two lines here are parallel i can say that this angle and this angle are um, equal because those are corresponding angles on parallel lines uh, so i end up with a small triangle 120 and 80 and a big triangle of 120 plus x and 200 and then I can come along and say well corresponding sides are in proportion or they're similar triangles so I can say 120 plus x divided by its corresponding side of 120 should equal 200 from the big triangle divided by its corresponding side of 80 okay so tidying that up uh, 120 plus x will equal 200 multiplied by 120 divided by 80. Okay, dividing on the left by 120 becomes multiplying on the right. Tidying things up in there, you've got a common 10. Okay, there's a common four there, so that leaves two, and it leaves three out of that. And a common two leaves 100 instead of 200. Okay, so we get ourselves 120 plus X equals 300, and X equals 300 take away 120, which is uh, 180 centimeters. Okay, so there's similar triangles.